you. All right. Well, welcome to class, everyone. Um, this is our food smarts. I, I included the waste reduction part because we're going to talk a little bit about reducing food waste. But food smarts is the name of our nutrition education curriculum at Leah's Pantry. Um, so today's class will be up until 1145. But I believe we have some time after that. Is that right, Tina? If people have questions, yes, they want to chat after. Yep. Yes. Okay, great. So sure. we have a little, we have a little flexibility with the with the class time today. So I'm happy to stay 10, 15 minutes after um, to answer any questions. All right. So before I begin class, I always like to check if you can hear my audio and see my video and my slides. So does anyone have any trouble seeing me or hearing me? Or is everyone okay? You can type in the chat box, raise, give me a thumbs up if you know how to do that. <laughs> oh, great. Someone else give me a thumbs up. Thank you so much, Steve. All right. No one's complaining. So that's a good sign. Oh, great. You guys know the thumbs up feature. Very nice. We got some sharp Zoom users here. All right. Wonderful. Um, so you can show your video only if you wish, but that's just an option. I do like seeing people's beautiful face. And for today's class, I would like for everyone to take one minute I assume everyone's at home, but if you're not at home, that's okay. Um, if you're at home, please take one minute to find a fruit or vegetable from your home, or you could just think of one that you eat most often. And uh, we're going to use that for our activity near the end of class today. So find a fruit or a vegetable from your kitchen or your, your countertop that you use most often. If, if you want to just relax and sit back, <laughs> stay in your seat, you can just think of one you eat most often. So I will stay by um, my, my computer and I will think of one I eat most often. So one I eat most often is um, avocados lately. They're, they're in season now and I love avocados. So that is one I eat a lot. Anyone else? Looks like everyone's staying by their computer, which is okay. Oh, thanks. Uh, who is that? Is that Yolanda or, or Barbara? I can't see your names anymore, but someone has an orange or a grapefruit. Asparagus, Steve says. Ooh, someone has an avocado. Wonderful. Uvi, he says grapes. Oh, yeah. If you could put in the chat, too, that would be helpful. There's lots of faces, so I can't see everybody. And for some reason, sometimes your names disappear. So I'm sorry if I can't refer you to your name. Oranges, Julie says. Great. Debbie says apple, dried apricots. Wonderful. You guys have a great variety. Cuties. <laughs> Love the name too, Barbara. Or Beverly, <laughs> excuse me. See, that's why I need the magnifying. I, uh, <laughs> the font is too small on the chat box sometimes. Yolanda. Oh, that's the orange. Okay, wonderful. All right. Thanks for sharing, everyone. We'll come back to that a little later. Um, I'm going to skip this because it's out. It looks like most of you know how to use Zoom, but if you have any issues, let me or Tina or Bruce know, and we can do our best to help you. So this is the agenda for today. I can't um, hear. Oh, you can't hear? Can you hear me now? Maybe um, if you can't hear me, one thing I'd like to check for is the volume on your device. So make sure that's turned up or turned on. Does everyone, can everyone hear me? Yeah, okay, I see some head nods. Maybe it's just Diane. <laughs> okay, all right, so to the agenda. We're gonna do some introductions and then we'll go right into the topics. So today's topics, I chose to talk about healthy eating, what that looks like. Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about zero waste cooking. And then I have a little video for our recipe demonstration. And then I'm gonna talk about these $6 vouchers that everyone is eligible to earn. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, near the end of class and some closing announcements and uh, time for Q and A after. Okay, so my name is Anna and I am a registered dietitian. I'm a native to San Francisco and I studied nutrition at UC Davis and earned my master's in New York City. 
And a few fun facts about me. Uh, I love to hike and bike around the city and I love to make people smile. So hopefully I make you smile. And one part that I love about my work is I get to meet people like you. Um, it's looking a little different this past year. I'm meeting more people on Zoom, but I love, love teaching classes and I love meeting and um, hearing from the community. So um, this class will be very, maybe a little different than other nutrition classes that you've attended. Uh, we really like to center um, our, our work around voices in our community. So this is not gonna be a lecture. We're gonna have a lot of fun activities. I wanna hear from you. So I'm gonna ask you to type in the chat box a lot or ask you questions. So feel free to chime in. All right, so um, I'd like to learn and hear uh, about you all. So if you are comfortable with introducing yourself, uh, maybe since we have quite a lot of people here today, um, maybe you can type in the chat box. So uh, please share where you're from, where you, where you were raised, and uh, what is one thing about food or nutrition you want to learn more about? Um, so, so you could type in the chat box or you could raise your hand to uh, speak up if you would if you wish. <laughs> Thanks, Tina. Tina is from San Jose. Very lovely. Beverly or Bev is fine. Thanks, Bev. I always like it when people tell me their preferred names. Is there one thing about food or nutrition that someone wants to learn more about? Oh, Tina says she wants to learn of how to eat healthy and how to lower cholesterol. Ooh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that today. So that's great, Tina. Debbie, oh, you're from LA, welcome. Uh, want to learn more about calcium absorption. Ooh, very, very specific, Debbie. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about calcium. Um, I won't dig in too much about calcium absorption, but I can, I can offer a few tips around that. Welcome, Steve from Redwood City. Wow, we have people from all over. And Beverly says what Tina said <laughs> and minimizing food waste. Okay, great. All right. Thanks, Bev. Yolanda from Redwood City likes to put scraps into your fertilizer or for your plants and trees. Oh, how wonderful. You're already reducing food waste by putting it back into the earth and growing more um, plants and trees, which is great. Oh, wow, we have someone from Florida, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Sota. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> Welcome, uh, Violetta from Daily City, checking your glucose. Ooh, okay. Um, yeah, that if, if you are checking your glucose, I assume, um, or I, I'm guessing that you, you might need to manage that for medical reasons. So that is important to check for fruit and vegetables because they do have some sugar. All right, we got a lot of people. I'm gonna read a few more and then move on. <laughs> Julie, oh, you're from San Francisco as well from Redwood City, lowering daily calories, less carbohydrates. Okay, Steve wants to learn how to utilize leftovers to complement your meals in a healthy way. Ooh, yes. Uh, v would like to learn more about kidney-friendly foods. Ooh, that is very specific as well. If you're looking for kidney-friendly foods uh, for medical reasons, that's definitely something you want to talk to your medical team about. Um, let's see. Jane from Redwood City. Lots of people from Redwood City. I would like to learn more about the nutritional needs for senior citizens and how age changes. Oh yeah, age changes everything. Um, mentally, physically, I'm sure everyone can agree. Um, Barbara wants to learn more about healthy small plates, I think. All right, well, thank you so much for sharing everyone. You're so wonderful. Some people are very shy. So sometimes my classes are very quiet. <laughs> so I appreciate, I appreciate all the feedback. Oh, wow, we have someone from Hawaii. Aloha, Alex. Learn to be full. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes, sometimes it's hard to find foods that make us feel satisfied. All right. Well, great. Thanks so much for sharing, everyone. If you didn't have a chance to share, please keep chiming in and I can save the chat um, to review later. 
but we're going to move on now. So let's dig into healthy eating. So what does healthy eating mean to you all? What, what kind of foods come to mind when you think of a healthy eating pattern or a healthy meal? What are some specific foods you think about? You type in the chat box or unmute yourself and raise your hand to speak up. Yolanda says fruits and vegetables. Very good. Any, anyone else? Fruits and veggies. That's it. <laughs> Greens, Jen says. All right, you guys got half of the plate I'm talking about. Oh, Debbie says proteins like fish and poultry, whole grains. All right, great. You already nailed most of the plate I'm talking about. So has anyone seen this plate before? My plate, this, this is coming from the dietary guidelines um, from the Department of Agriculture in our country. And this is what they refer to as a healthy eating pattern. And they recommend these five different food groups, fruits and vegetables, grains, protein, which some of you already mentioned, and um, along with dairy. Now let's talk about each one real quick. So why are fruits beneficial for us? Why are they considered a healthy food? What's so great about fruits? Vitamins and Vitamin. fiber. Vitamins and fiber. Awesome. You nailed it, V. Um, yes. So fruits are very rich in vitamins, like oranges are very rich in vitamin C, which can help support a, um, a healthy immune system. And um, the, the guidelines actually recommend a colorful variety. So aim for eating different colors because each one gives our body something different. So oranges give our body uh, vitamin C. But um, if you eat lots of green leafy um, vegetables, well, actually, that's that's not a fruit. That's a <laughs> that's a that's a vegetable. But um, let's see, bananas. Bananas are high in you know potassium. So each color gives our body something different, and potassium is good for our heart health and our blood pressure. So it's it's a beneficial for us to aim for a colorful variety, and aiming for eating whole fruits compared to fruit juice. Um, so aiming to eat a whole orange or a whole apple compared to drinking apple juice or orange juice. And the reason is because when we juice the fruit, we are missing a very important nutrient, which is a fiber that's missing in juice. And juice tends to be um, pretty high in sugars. It takes a lot more oranges and fruits to make um, fruit juice. So you get a, a lot more value for, um, from eating whole fruits, whole fruits. All right, same thing with vegetables, <laughs> very rich in vitamins and minerals. And each color also gives our body something different. For example, broccoli and other dark green vegetables, very high in calcium. Um, but orange vegetables like sweet potatoes, very high in vitamin A, which uh, supports our eye health. So lots of value from eating different colors and uh, similar to fruits, eating whole vegetables compared to vegetable juice. It's okay to drink vegetable juice or fruit juice sometimes, but aim to eat more whole fruits and vegetables. Also, fun fact, beans are also a vegetable too. So if you uh, include beans, you, you win some vegetable points. All right, let's talk about grains now. So what are some examples of grains? Can, it, can anyone think of some examples of grains? What are Brown some grains? Rice. Brown rice, I hear, very nice. Brown Oatmeal. rice. Oatmeal, very nice, Bev. Anyone else? There's more to life than oats and brown rice. Whole wheat. <laughs> Whole wheat. Yes, Bev. Yes. So lots of different grains in the world. Some I haven't even tried, um, but the most common ones we see are made of wheat, corn, um, rice, and uh, usually comes in the form of bread, pasta. Oh, I hear some tapping. Okay. Maybe it went away. Uh, cereal oatmeal um, and quinoa. There's other different types of grains too, like farro, barley, lots of different grains. Um, and grains are very beneficial for us because they are also rich in fiber. 
and they support healthy cholesterol levels and also healthy blood sugar levels. So that's great for those of you who are checking your blood sugar and also uh, wanna check for healthy cholesterol. Um, grains are also very rich in B vitamins, which help our uh, energy levels. And grains also have uh, nutrients that support a healthy immune system, which is very important <laughs> during this time and throughout our life, right? We don't want to become sick. Okay, any questions so far? I just want to check everyone's okay before we move on to protein. All right, protein is a very weird part of the plate. Protein is not really a food. It's a nutrient we get from food. So what are some protein-rich foods that, um, that you all can think of? Salmon. Debbie? Salmon, yeah. Debbie mentioned a few already. Fish and poultry. So poultry is our chicken or, or turkey. Tofu. Oh, thank you, Julie, for mentioning a plant-based one. <laughs> so protein you can also find in plant-based foods. So you don't always have to get it from animal foods like meats. How about um, nuts? Yes, nuts. Nuts and seeds. Very, very nice. V says eggs, which is a great cheap source of protein that's super easy to prepare. I love eggs. Um, so here are some other examples. We have beans here. We have cheese. Um, yogurt is a great source of protein. Um, I think we nailed it. I think we nailed most of the protein rich foods. So why is protein important to include in our meals? Why should we eat protein? What's so great about protein? Besides the for taste. The energy. For your energy. Yes, protein does provide our body energy. And more importantly, um, it provides our body um, muscle. Well, it doesn't provide our body muscle, but it helps build and maintain muscle. And as we age, we lose a bit of muscle around 50, 55 we start to lose a bit of muscle every year. So it's really important to eat enough protein throughout the day to maintain your muscle and your strength, which is very important um, as we age. Oh yes, very nice, Debbie. Muscle, muscle and brain function. Hmm. Yes, your, your brain is a muscle. <laughs> um, you, you have to exercise your brain every day or else you'll lose a bit of your, your brain function. So um, I never thought about protein uh, supporting br uh, brain function, but I see a bit of truth in that, Debbie. So here is my favorite picture to show when I talk about protein. Does anyone wanna guess how old this lady is? She is a gymnast from um, some part of Europe, I can't remember. But does anyone want to guess how old she is? Oh, Steve says 84. That's very close. She is 94. Um, she wasn't 94 when she took this. I think she was maybe 89. And um, she is a long life <laughs> gymnast. So she's been doing this her whole life. But wow, look how strong she is. Very inspiring when I become older. But, you know, don't do this at home. I'm just, you know, showing you inspiring pictures to show you. You can still be strong as we age. But do what's comfortable for you. So maybe some stretching, maybe some walking, other strength exercises that um, you and your doctor talked about that's safe for you, uh, but do what's safe for you. Don't, don't try to hold yourself up <laughs> like she did. Okay, last food group is dairy. Dairy. So what are from some foods that are considered a dairy food? Milk, cheese. Milk, cheese. Yes, you got it. So anything made from milk or um, cow's milk, goat milk, uh, any, anything from a ruminant animal. Um, so that also includes ice cream. That also includes um, yogurt and um, any fermented yogurt drinks, things like that. And what's so great about dairy? Oh, cottage cheese. Nice, Julie. Yeah, cottage cheese. What's so great about dairy? What does dairy have? Calcium. Calcium, very nice. Also very important as we age because we do lose a bit of bone mass. So, um, and it also supports strong teeth. I've had many patients who are missing teeth. So that really affects your, your diet quality. So we wanna make sure our, our teeth are strong, our bones are strong. 
And some dairy foods like yogurt um, also have some great sources of protein and milk too. All right. So here is another plate. So it's a little different than the my plate. This actually comes from Harvard School of Public Health, and they recommend um, a few different, um, a different style of the plate. So let's compare the two. So what are some differences you notice right away besides besides the color? <laughs> what are some differences you notice? Vegetables are more. Yeah. Yeah, they recommend more vegetables. And I think the reason is because um, most, the average American doesn't eat enough <laughs> vegetables. We eat, we tend to eat more fruit because it's sweeter. Um, so they recommend a bit more vegetables. All right, what else is different? The oils. Oils, yeah, that's, that's missing on the my plate. And healthy oils are definitely part of a healthy eating pattern. I know a few decades ago that, fat was demonized and eating fat was quote unquote bad for you, but um, healthy oils is essential to our health. Uh, we need healthy fats to support our hormones. It gives us nice shiny hair and skin, supports our brain health and our immune system. Um, and what's important is choosing healthier oils. Uh, so healthier types. Um, so things like olive oil, most vegetable oils, the ones that are liquid at room temperature and avoiding ones that are solid. So thinking of butter or coconut oil um, or fried foods. Those, are those tend to be less um, healthier for us. It's okay to have a little bit of butter sometimes, um, but choosing the healthier oils most of the time. Oh, Debbie noticed dairy is not there. So yes, dairy is not on this plate. And the reason is because Many people have lactose intolerance or become sensitive to milk products um, later, later in their life. So water's totally fine. You don't have to have dairy. You can get calcium through other foods like dark green vegetables, certain fish like um, sardines or tuna. I don't know if anyone's a fan of those fishes, <laughs> but you can get calcium through other foods. Um, lots of foods are fortified with calcium um, these days as well, like breads and, and juice. So you can, you can get calcium through non-dairy foods. Yes, Barbara says water, water, water. Your, your body's made up of more than 70% of water. So you need water every day. All right, what are some other differences? So we talked about water, healthy oils, more vegetables. Anything else? Anyone notice anything about the, the grains and the protein? They added a few words. So for grains, they recommend whole grains and that's different than just regular grains. So whole grains are things like brown rice, whole wheat bread, um, quinoa, um, what are some other ones? There's whole grain pastas, lots of whole grain versions of food these days. Compare that to white rice or white breads. So those are more refined. And the reason they're aiming for more whole grains is they have more fiber, more of those nutrients, and they're less refined. Um, so more of the nutrients are still in that grain. Not to say you can't ever eat white rice or white bread anymore, just using more whole grains most of the time. And Debbie says protein, probably less red meat. Oh yes, you are, you are right, Debbie. <laughs> they recommend healthier proteins. So um, choosing more fish, choosing more poultry, beans and nuts, and limiting red meats and cheeses. And the reason is because those are rich in um, unhealthy fats, um, depending on the cut. Um, but they can also be high in sodium sometimes too, especially those processed meats like um, bacon or cold cut turkey, cold cut hams, things like that. So not so great for your blood pressure or your cholesterol levels. If you have too much, you can have it a few times a week, maybe not for every meal. Um, so choosing more of the healthier protein. All right. 
One more difference we didn't talk about is um, the one on the left. And it's a little reminder to stay active. So part of healthy living is not only about what you eat, but also how often you're moving your body. If you look at your body, you have arms and legs that bend, right? And uh, we are designed to move. So make sure you aim for physical activity at least 30 minutes a day doesn't have to be all at once. You could do it, you know, throughout the day. So what I've been doing is taking little mini walks throughout the day after, after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So um, if I walk for 10 minutes after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I get 30 minutes. So it's a nice little habit and routine I'm trying to do. <laughs> Uh, Debbie says, how about low fat cheese? Oh, yes. Um, low fat cheese can can work can work. I'm not a fan of low fat cheese because it um, doesn't taste so great as <laughs> real cheese. Um, but that that's okay. If you want to, if you want to lower the, the fats, the, the unhealthier fats of cheese, that's, that's, uh, that's definitely an option, Debbie. All right. Anyone have any questions between these two plates or around these two plates? Okay. So, um, we will move on and I want, you know, one take home message about these plates is eating different variety of food groups can be difficult for every meal. I understand it's maybe hard to get vegetables sometimes in breakfast, but the goal here is really to try to aim for a variety of food groups um, throughout the day. So if you didn't have vegetables at breakfast, maybe you know aim for more vegetables at lunch and dinner or um, during snack time. Um, but I, I know it's hard to get <laughs> all those food groups uh. at, for every meal. So try to aim for as many as you can throughout the day. All right, we'll move on to zero waste cooking. And before we talk about zero waste cooking, I want to talk about food waste. So food waste is a huge problem <laughs> um, and food waste happens in four main places. So it happens in factories where they process and package our food. It happens on farms. It happens in businesses like restaurants, hospitals, and schools and in our homes. So does anyone want to guess how or where food waste happens the most? Where does food waste happen the most out of these four places? Ooh, Beverly orders from imperfect foods. Oh yes, that's a great um, way to help um, some of the farm, uh, some of the food waste that happens on farms because they have um, not so pretty looking fruits and vegetables that they can't sell at grocery stores. All right, homes, we nailed it. <laughs> so yes, we waste the most at home, um, right next to businesses. And this data might have changed since we've been in lockdown. Um, since we're mostly cooking at home now, we might be a bigger contributor to food waste. But the good news is we have the most impact to reduce the most food waste. So what are some reasons why we should reduce food waste? I always like to talk about the reasons why to help motivate us. So what is, what's so important about reducing food waste? Anyone? Not good for the planet. Ooh, yes, very nice, Julie. You hit the biggest one. Beverly says reducing landfill, also very important, Beverly. So yes, helping the planet, helping the planet. Most of our food waste ends up in the landfill. Um, we can also get more nutrition from food that we don't waste, right? And I think a big one is number six, saving money. We spend money on groceries. So when we waste food, we're, we're throwing away our money. And you can save a lot of money depending on how many people are in your home. So for example, if you are cooking and preparing food for one person, you can save up to $375 every year and uh, double that amount if you're cooking for two. And the number just keeps going up if there's more people in your home. So average um, home of four people can earn can save up to $1,500, which is a nice little you know, stimulus check. 
So I, I always like to save money. I, I grew up on saving <laughs> money. So it always makes me feel good when I can be more resourceful with food and uh, save, save um, some of my uh, money. All right, so how many pounds of food do you think we throw away per person every year? 10 pounds, 35 pounds, 40 pounds, 100 pounds, or 400 pounds? Utina says 35. Anyone else? Julie says 100. Okay, very close. It's actually 400. Oh, very good, Bev. You got it. So 400 pounds of food per person every year. Um, this is not saying everyone throws away 40, 400 pounds. This is just the average. So that's a lot of food. That's about, that's over a pound a day of food that we're throwing away. And this is a report to, uh, from about four years ago, and uh, they they averaged about 1.3 trillion pounds of food waste every year, every year. So think about all the years you've been on earth. This is a lot of food that we're throwing away. But luckily, there are some ways that we can reduce it. So here's some tips I want everyone to walk away with today. I have four tips uh, for zero waste cooking. And you know the goal is not zero waste, it's to reduce as much waste as you can. And maybe ultimately we can have zero waste in the future, but I know it's hard to be completely zero waste, but here are just a few ways to help you reduce a bit of the waste. So number one, does anyone wanna guess what number one is? Make a, begins with a P. Hopefully some of you do this already. Make a compost bin. Oh yeah, Beverly, we're gonna talk about that um, in the third class. But yeah, if that's an option for you, you can make a compost bin. Um, I know that's not an option for everyone. So number one, I like to talk about making a plan. So before you even buy the food, before you even shop at the grocery store, uh, food waste reduction happens when you plan. So. I like to plan a few meals or recipes that I wanna make throughout the week. And then um, before I make a list, I scan my kitchen, scan all my counters, my freezer, my pantry, um, before I actually create a list. Um, that way I don't buy what I already have. So maybe I already have a can of beans or frozen chicken, so I don't have to buy that already. So once you kind of scan your kitchen and um, see what you already have, then you create a list. And the key is to sticking to your list. <laughs> a lot of research has shown people who stick to their list uh, shop more healthy and also save money. So stick to things on your list and avoid shopping hungry. Has anyone shopped hungry before? Didn't have a meal in a few hours and went grocery shopping? What tends to happen? You buy everything you see. <laughs> yes, you buy everything you see, Yolanda. Very good. Yeah, when you're hungry, everything looks tasty and uh, you tend to grab everything that looks really good to you, uh, which might not be on your grocery list or might not be the most healthiest option for you. So try to have a snack, try to have a meal so you can focus and stick to your list. And one way to categorize and organize your grocery list. So instead of just writing everything down, I like to actually organize it in the way the grocery store is laid out. So grocery stores normally have a produce aisle, right? Where you can find fruits and vegetables and a meat section and a dry goods section. So I like to put everything I need in the produce aisle, everything I need in the uh, meat aisle. That way, when I go grocery shopping, I'm very organized and I know what I need to get in the in um, each section of the grocery store. So I don't have to go back and forth like, oh, I forgot my bananas. I need to go back to the produce aisle or, oh, I forgot my, my frozen corn. I need to go back to the frozen aisle. So this saves you a lot of time um, from going back and forth. And another idea is to specify how much you need. This is also a big part of food waste. We tend to buy more than we need because um, maybe it might be on sale or we didn't really plan out how much you actually need. So um, be very thoughtful with your planning because um, it's very distracting when you go into the grocery store. Sometimes I, 
I, I space out and I forget what I need. So writing it down, writing down how much I need um, helps you focus a bit more and hopefully reduce food waste. All right, second tip is scrubbing. Scrubbing and don't peel. And this works really well with fruits and uh, root vegetables like potatoes, yams, carrots, ginger and other root vegetables. And the reason is because um, one, it saves you time in the kitchen <laughs> from, from scrubbing. And also the, the peel and the skin right beneath the peel is actually the most nutritious parts of root vegetables. So I like to keep those on. Um, just a simple scrub while under cold water is enough to remove all the dirt and bacteria. So you really don't have to, to peel um, your carrots or your potatoes. Leave them on, saves you a lot of labor, and also it's more nutritious for you. And I know the texture might be a little different. The taste might be a little different with the skin on. So what I like to do is cook them. I like to roast carrots with the skin on, roast my potatoes with the skin on, and um, you'll, you'll get used to the skin <laughs> with on, uh, but it has a really great flavor and it can help with cooking as well. All right, anyone do this already? Keep their skin on with their vegetables? Yes? Oh, great, all right. This is just review for you all. All right, number three is don't scrap it. So saving your scraps. So when you're preparing fruits and vegetables like uh, bell peppers or carrots, usually we throw away the ends and tops of food, but you can save those in a little bag. Um, I like to put in the freezer so it doesn't attract bugs. Um, and you can use those once you have enough to make a home, uh, homemade vegetable stock. So once you have enough scraps, you can boil that in some water and then strain it and you don't have to buy vegetable stock anymore. Other ideas for scraps are eating them. So one scrap I see sometimes that is thrown out is broccoli stalks and um, big parts of cabbages or cauliflower. And you can eat those parts. You can eat those parts. Um, they're a bit tough, so I like to cook them down, but they're just as nutritious. And it's actually my favorite part because the stems are very, um, usually have a mild, um, sweeter taste than the florets or the other parts of the vegetable. So for example, if you prepare cauliflower, normally the stem and the leaves are tossed out. Um, but if you chop away some of the fibrous parts, <laughs> you can, you can uh, cook them along with the florets. So I like to saute them, I like to roast them, and you get double the vegetable. Look how much vegetable I have compared to if I threw away the, the leaves and the stems. So I like to save those for, for cooking. They're a bit fibrous, so I would recommend cooking them. Oh, Yolanda says, what do you do with broccoli when it turns yellow? Oh, yeah, yellow broccoli is not the funnest to eat. <laughs> Usually I, I just cut away the yellow parts. And if the stems are looking okay, I, I usually keep that part. But when it's yellow, it's, it's a sign of spoilage, which is something we, I, I try to prevent. Oh, Beverly says, find a friend with chickens. They love our scraps. Oh, what a fun idea. What a fun <laughs> idea, Bev. <laughs> I don't have a friend with chickens. Well, actually, my, my neighbor actually has chickens. I'll ask, I'll ask him <laughs> if he wants my scraps. All right, last little tip, super easy, freezing. Um, many uh, people I, I meet don't use their freezer enough. And freezing is such a great way to kind of extend the shelf life of food. It stops all the activity um, from ripening and from foods going bad. So you can freeze almost anything. So I like to freeze my uh, overripe bananas or other fruits I might have or leftovers. So freezing is also a great way to save um, and reduce food waste. All right, so I asked a few of you to bring something, fruit or vegetable that, that you normally throw away. So um, for this activity, I would like you all to kind of think creatively about how you can um, reduce the food waste that normally comes with your fruit or vegetable. So for example, broccoli. Normally what gets thrown out are the stems, the parts that turn yellow, right? So what are some ways that we can reduce this um, avoid this waste. 
using some of the tips we talked about. We can save the stems, right? Enjoy them cooked or raw. I'll show you a recipe in a few seconds. Um, saving the stems for a soup. Uh, you can save the bag to reuse for next time. <laughs> you can compost rotten parts if you do have uh, a compost bin, or you can buy a little less, right? Um, maybe, maybe it turned yellow because you had too much or maybe you forgot about it. <laughs> so making sure you uh, check your refrigerator uh, before your food goes bad. Chop and roast in garlic oil. Ooh, very tasty. That sounds delightful. I like vegetables with garlic. The garlic tends to make foods like broccoli taste a lot better. <laughs> All right, does anyone wanna share their food? Someone brought avocado I saw. So one tip for avocados, because I know they ripen very fast. And when you have a lot, it's, it's hard to eat a lot of avocado throughout the week before they go bad, right? They turn and ripen very fast. So one thing I've been doing is actually freezing it, putting the whole avocado in my freezer. And uh, that can prevent it from uh, spoiling. Uh, what you do is just defrost it and it'll get a little mushy, but um, you can still save some of the avocado. It's, it's good for mashing on toast or maybe making guacamole or something. Um, does anyone want to share their, their fruit or their vegetable? Yolanda, I think you brought like an orange. Yes. An orange. What okay. So the peel. the peel. Yeah. Does anyone have any ideas for the orange peel? I've heard some candied orange peel recipes. You can candy the orange peels. You can zest it. Um, what else can you do? You can always compost the peel too, because I know it's a little bitter. <laughs> you, I, I don't recommend eating the peel of fruits like oranges. Banana peel, ooh, Violetta. So I actually do have a slide on bananas. So if you have bananas, normally the peel gets thrown away. Um, so one thing is you can eat it. <laughs> um, some people put the whole banana in their smoothie recipes. Some people, um, <laughs> chop it up and, and cook it. I can show you a bonus video that uses banana peel. I personally haven't tried that before. I'm not adventurous enough, but I, I will try it one day. Make sure you just wash the peel before you try to attempt to eat it. <laughs> um, but I always like freezing my bananas if I have a lot because they do also ripen fast like avocados. Oh, Yolanda says she puts banana peels on her roses. Very nice, excellent way to fertilize your plants or um, your roses, if you have roses. True, if you put an av avocados in the refrigerator, they ripen slower. That's true, Bruce, yes. Yeah, anytime you put anything in the refrigerator, it lasts more, it lasts a bit longer because the cold temperature slows the, the activity of the ripening process. So you can put your your avocados in the refrigerator. I just put it in the freezer when I have too many <laughs> that I can't finish um, within a week before they go bad. Orange rind, can, you can slice it into your drink. Oh yes, very great tip, Julie. So um, Yolanda, um, you, can, you can keep the orange rinds and slice it to make like infused water or um, iced tea. Avocado, oh, yeah. keep seed in place. What do you mean, Steve? I've seen some people eat the avocado seed too. If you wanna, if you wanna try that, you boil the seed and you can um, slice it and eat it. I haven't tried that yet. Lots of ways to reduce food waste um, that I haven't tried. A, a dehydrator works great for fruits and vegetables. Oh yes, if you have a, a dehydrator, you can also do that. That can if, if you're dry food, that can also keep it for longer. You plant the seed and have three trees growing. Oh yeah, if you, if you have a gardening space, you can grow avocados if, you're, if that's available to you. Oh, Steve says you can also dry the citrus rinds. What do you do with the citrus rinds when they're dry, Steve? Is it, is it okay for cooking or for sprinkling on things? I'm not too sure what to do with this. Maybe it's good for flavoring teas or something. Keep sharing your ideas. I'm learning so much from you all. <laughs> all right. So 
I want to show one recipe using broccoli stems. So this is Julia's broccoli stem salad. Hello everyone. My name is Annalisa Lim and today we're going to learn how to make a Julia's broccoli stem salad. Broccoli stems are usually thrown away, but they can actually be enjoyed either raw or cooked. This dish that we're going to learn is simple, delicious, and kind to the environment. So let's get started. ways to prepare raw broccoli stem but um i usually like my vegetables cooked so <laughs> i do like to roast it or saute it um, for my preferred texture but if i'm feeling lazy i i do like to prepare it raw but make sure you um peel the outer layer very well until you find that white a very light green um, that tends to be a more softer, tender part of the stem. I don't recommend eating the stem um, with the fibrous part still attached. It's a bit tough. <laughs> All right. And you can find more recipes like this on our website. Uh, this is eatfresh.org. And maybe I have time to show you all the, the website. So eFresh.org is a recipe and healthy lifestyle recipe that, um, excuse me, website we manage. And there's lots of great resources. You can send me questions. Um, I, I answer questions online about, you know, food or nutrition that you're curious about. But one of our most popular features on eFresh.org is our recipe page. So when you visit our website, you can find a recipe on this sidebar and for Julia's broccoli stem salad and all our recipes, a really fun feature on our website is this part. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and on our recipe page, you can adjust how many servings you want to make. So if you're only cooking for one or two people, maybe you don't want to make four servings of this. Um, so you might um, want to make less. So you can press this minus button and you can adjust how many servings you want to make and all the numbers will adjust to how many servings you want to make. So it does the math for you, which is great. Um, but if you have a lot of people in your home and you might need to feed, I don't know, 16 people, <laughs> it also does the math for you. So really great feature helps you specify how much you actually need for a recipe without you doing the math. Okay. I think we might have time for this banana peel recipe. Are we good on time, Bruce? I know it's 10, it's 11, excuse me, 1153. Is it okay? Close. I think people are starving too now. Oh, you're starving. Oh no. No, no I said, starve. I think everybody is. Oh, <laughs> don't starve. <laughs> um, how about I talk a little bit about the vouchers then? So if you are a resident of San Mateo County, so that includes Redwood City, that includes Foster City, um, Daly City, uh, you earn $6 VegRx vouchers for every class you attend. If you're, if you're not a resident, I'm so sorry. Um, 
I'm not able to provide vouchers for y'all. I wish I could change the way this program works, but this is how it's funded. And um, I can only give these vouchers to people who live in San Mateo County. So to earn these vouchers, um, they will be mailed after the last class. So I will be teaching another class in May and June and I'll, I'll be mailing it out then. And I think I might need Bruce and Tina's help because everyone who registered today also put in their email. So is it okay to send everyone a follow-up email um, for the survey, Tina? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So the survey only takes a few minutes. I'm sorry <laughs> you, you, um, if you're not a fan of surveys, but it doesn't take too long. It's only one page. And um, I will be sending that to you all um, later today once I get emails from you all. Um, and the great thing about these vouchers are they don't expire. So you can use them whenever you feel safe to go to a farmer's market and you can use them in many markets in San Mateo County. So someone said they live in Foster City. Oh, great, Debbie, um, that counts. So there's a market at Fo Foster City. There's markets in San Mateo County, um, but also in other counties too, like San Francisco. Uh, make sure you check online uh, or wherever you check for your information if the market is open and if they've moved. Some have moved or closed due to COVID, um, but I know the one at Sarah Monty Mall is open. I'm not so sure about Foster City, so I'll check back on that one. Oopsie. All right. And let's skip over to the last slide. So, um, if, does anyone have any questions? Otherwise, I wanna thank you all for your time. I'm sorry if you're starving and um, I wish you all a happy Earth Day. Tomorrow is officially happy, uh, uh, officially Earth Day. So what a great way to celebrate Earth Day by helping our planet by reducing it, uh, um, some food waste. And the next class we are tentatively aiming for Wednesday, May 19th. Um, and I'm going to be planning to talk about nutrition facts and food coat dates. And we might do something around um, uh, celebrating Asian Americans too. So uh, stay tuned for next community day. I hope to be there. I hope you all will be there. Hope you learn something new. Uh, hope you will try something new this week uh, that helps our planet and also future generations too. Um, if you have children or grandchildren, um, I'm very, I'm very, uh, I'm very nervous about how our future will look like and how our planet will look like if we don't take some action. Thank you so oh. much, Anna. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Tina. Thank, thank you, you so Anna. much, thank everyone. You, thank you. Thank you. Uh, you could before have everybody been... go, if you can just help us with this quick poll, the audience. Thanks, Anna. We'll see you next community day. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Anna. This is so amazing. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, Barbara. Bye, Yolanda. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Thank Veronica. You.